Everybody, it's Tyler here at Sugar Rush, checking with 2707X. Joel Jackson Rooster coming out of Tennessee. Uh, this team, by the way, number two ranked in skills for JROTC team. So congratulations on the great performance so far in that. Big improvements coming in from WPI, by the way, uh, as we'll be talking about on this uh, uh, robot. Removing some things, adding some things, changing some things, some cool stuff with programming, of course, through odometry. Uh, C++ to talk about their brain and all about their robot. Let's learn more about them coming up here on Pits and Parts. This video on fun is brought to you by viewers like you and also in partnership with the following. The Robotics Education and Competition Foundation provides fantastic programs for students from elementary school all the way through college. These include VEX, Aerial Drone Competition, Online Challenges, JROTC, Grow Powered, Scholarships, Certifications, and so much more. To discover these exciting opportunities, visit recf.org and get connected. Jacob, let's talk about some of the uh, iterations on this robot. Uh, talking about uh, on your uh, intake, we'll be talking about some removals, but first off, let's go into your drivetrain, uh, talking about going over the barriers, how that's come together, and a couple other things we'll be covering too. Sure, yeah. So at WPI, we had a really big issue with not being able to get over the barrier. And so one of the remedies we had for that was we switched out one of our Omni wheels for a traction wheel. It didn't really want to fit, so we cut it down and we attached the uh, gears. All right. Another problem we had was we had our gears attached with little inserts, and we had a problem with them rounding out in the plastic hubs of sure. the Omni wheels. So we went with screwing the wheels together, and that has done a big improvement at this competition. So yeah, that's our drive lane. So for our intake, uh, we had a second stage down here. It was a a uh, low strength axle with square inserts and four inch rubber rollers from an Omni wheel. And on this side, we had gears and sprockets. So it would feed off this one motor and come across. And then we would use these gears to reverse the direction. And then it would come down and spin this other bar so we could intake faster. Uh, but we removed that because we had issues with it bending and it really wasn't effective. We found out that our, having our catapult all the way down to load into it was not an effective strategy, and we never did it. So yeah. we ripped it out and used the rubber bands, which we had a lot more success with. Very good. When you talk about success, like what are you seeing from the output? Like, are you just able to score a few more tri balls a match, or how does that uh, work out from your overall throughput? It just, it, it's more compliant than the rollers. Okay, and sure. so the, the, the tri balls load up on it a lot faster. It's more grip, and it, it scores just as good. All right. Talk to me about the uh, passive hooks you have as well, yeah. too. So this was a, a add-on that we just added in uh, a couple days ago. We added this because we had our balancer, but we could not uh, balance because we had issues with getting over the bar, and we wanted a quicker way to hang and get that extra 20 points, which is really big. And so we just put some metal on the side with some plastic hooks that just ride over. We just have a button that sets our catapult at the right height, like that. So this just rides over the bar and we just kind of ride up and we just kind of hang there. Very cool. Uh, Yvette, talk to me about the uh, uh, blocker that you have on there as well too. And I know we're gonna be diving into your wings, but one of the things I love about your team is that not only are you a great offense machine, but you also have the versatility of that blocker. So talk to me more about it. Yeah, so at WPI, we noticed we were a really um, offensive bot and a blocker was a really easy add-on. It's uh, one piston and it goes up, you know, pretty good height. And yeah, it gives us the defensive qualities we needed to be a a wide variety bot, you know. Sure. Yeah. And continue on uh, through uh, the wings as well, too. Yeah, so the wings, I mean, it's an easy way to score um, a lot. Like, give us a wide scoring range, and, you know, they kind of just. Yep, we shoot them out, you know, allows us to score, you know, good range of try balls. And yeah, this is one piston, the blocker is one piston, and yeah. Let's start to wrap up. Uh, Kevin, talk to me about uh, programming side. I noticed you got an odometry pod on the bottom of your robot, so let's hear about that. Uh, I know we talked earlier going with uh, PID as well, uh, and then uh, a couple other things with the brain, and uh, you said you were using C++ mm -hmm. for the first time. Yes. So uh, a big problem with our team that we've just had past years, and especially getting into this one, was we needed accuracy during Auton, and just in general, whenever we needed to run something without driver input, so our big problem was, how do we really get that using blocks? Because that's what we've always used. Sure. So uh, we eventually had to make the decision uh, to try to use switch to using odometry and C++ programming, which was this uh, C++ programming is the easiest way to essentially accomplish odometry. So I pretty much had to sit down over a summer, completely learn how to do C++, uh, just to rewrite everything for this robot. 
So we now use custom PID, which just tracks, it uses this tracking wheel, and also just factors in the motors and the turns on those, just to kind of track our general distance. And then this wheel gives us a little bit of just added accuracy on that. So then also, uh, on the iteration we used at uh, WPI, we had a, we swapped this motor around to where it was facing uh, in here, which gave us a little bit extra space here. That allowed us to have a vertical tracker in rather than just this horizontal one. So that gave us uh, the ability to track sideways uh, movements as well. But we ended up finding out that it just wasn't really that effective. We didn't use it that much. And when we removed it, it really didn't affect anything uh, programming wise. Something I want to ask you, uh, when, when I think about teams when they're using odometry, one of the uh, downfalls with that is that uh, you do have the competency for drift occasion with that as well. Is the PID helping you out with that as well? Because you mentioned kind of the opposite of that, but I'm wondering as well, is the PID actually helping the odometry as well too? It does, yes. Yeah. So the, a big thing with odometry is a lot of times you would rely on having two of these pods to be able to track wherever you go. Now that we just have this one, a lot of the time, whenever we can, I do just rely on that PID. We mainly want to use odometry to do these to do our curved turns, sure. but most of the time we are just reusing our PID for strict accuracy in straight lines. Well, having a phenomenal event so far as we're recording this, currently number two team uh, at the end of uh, day one. So can't wait to see how you do here at 2707X. Good luck here, of course, at Sugar Rush. Can't wait to see how you do the rest of the season. Thanks a lot for taking the time. Thank you so much. This video on fun is brought to you by viewers like you and also in partnership with the following. The Robotics Education and Competition Foundation provides fantastic programs for students from elementary school all the way through college. These include VEX, Aerial Drone Competition, Online Challenges, JROTC, Girl Powered, Scholarships, Certifications, and so much more. To discover these exciting opportunities, visit recf.org and get connected. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and ring the bell to stay up to date on our new videos. Keep the conversation going and provide your input to our content. Most live shows can be found on the First Updates Now YouTube channel, live competitions at twitch.tv slash firstupdatesnow, and join our Discord at discord.gg slash firstupdatesnow. Check our other social offerings on TikTok, Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter.